Hi everyone, welcome to LC Math. Today we will derive the KDV equation from a Lagrangian. Very cool. Recall from the previous video, the KDV equation stated that psi dot plus d cubed psi by dx cubed minus 6 psi d psi by dx is equal to 0. Well, there is an associated equation, which is also called the KDV equation, which has everything plus. So we just let psi go to minus psi. It tells us that uh, minus psi dot minus d cubed psi by dx cubed minus 6. Well, we got minus psi here. We got minus psi here. So those become 1. And we have minus signs everywhere, which tells us that psi dot plus d cubed psi by dx cubed plus 6 psi d psi by dx is equal to 0. This is actually the equation that we'll be deriving in this video. They're both called the KDV equation. There are actually a lot of similar equations of the KDV form. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. All right, so we want to derive this using the Euler-Lagrange equations. To do that, we need to put in a Lagrangian, and it's kind of a strange one. Let's be considering the following Lagrangian. One half phi dot, yes, that's not a typo, dx phi plus dx phi cubed, sorry, psi. These are size. everything is psi. Minus one half dx squared psi squared, where original variable phi is defined to be d psi by dx. Pretty strange, got a cubic term, second order. Making sure I got it right, it's very important. Yep, okay, good. So let's write down the Euler-Lagrange equations now. They tell us that zero is equal to second derivative of variational of L with respect to mu mu minus d mu variational of L with respect to d mu psi plus delta psi by d phi. Now the mu's just stand for t and x. It's a shortcut. We've, we've employed Einstein's summation convention to sum over x and t's. So tells us 0 is equal to for mu equals x and t. If we include them explicitly, this tells us that 0 is equal to dt squared, variational of L with respect to phi double dot, plus dx squared, variational L, respect to dx squared psi. Okay, and that's that term. This term contains minus time derivative delta L by delta phi dot and variational of L with respect to d mu phi, one last term, plus delta L by delta phi. Okay, did I get this right? As far as I can tell, yeah. All right, so let's note which terms are definitely zero. Well, do you see any size by themselves up here? I'm really not seeing any size by themselves. So that means that this term is zero. And are you seeing any psi double dots? Well, I see dot. I don't see phi double dot. So this term is zero. And well, of the terms that are non-zero, we just have to compute them basically. There's no shortcut. So we have dx squared delta L by delta dx squared sine is equal to, well, where do you see delta x squared sine? I see it right here. There's a minus sign delta x, well, oh, sorry. It's very important to put these derivatives here. dx squared, okay, minus dx squared sine. I just took the two down here. There's a minus sign. You're done. This is actually minus dx to the fourth of sine. 
And we can use this relation here to write the phi's, which we care about, to peel off a derivative, basically, minus dx cubed psi. Excellent, we got a cubic term, that's what we want. Next term, time derivative of delta L by delta phi psi dot is equal to the time derivative of, okay, I see a psi dot here, that's the only one. So it's time derivative of one half dx phi, psi, I mean psi. <laughs> I'm writing the, the things correctly, I'm just not saying them. <laughs> okay, okay. So we have dx phi is, dx psi is phi up here. So I just take the time derivative one half of phi dot. Excellent. And our last term here, oh, sorry. That doesn't make sense, does it? This mu is an x. This is an x. Oh, okay, where do you see dx phi? Well, I see dx phi here. I also see dx phi here. So we're gonna have two terms. Derivative of delta L by delta dx phi is equal to dx. Okay. This just becomes one half psi dot. And the other place where it appears, take the three down, plus three dx psi squared. And that's it. Okay, now we're going to use the relation again. Time and space derivatives commute. So we'll take the time derivative out, put in the space for that term. It's just going to be one half phi dot. See what I did? Took the time derivative out, space derivative in, use this relation here. Okay, next term, it's a bit trickier. Well going to be space derivative of, well, three. Three times the space derivative. Three times the space derivative of phi squared. We just use the power rule again to take the two down, which is where the six comes from. Very important. This is just one half phi dot plus six phi dx phi, and there's where the six comes from. We just use the chain rule to take the two down and then multiply psi by x again, sorry, phi by x again, and that's it. Now we can combine the terms. Okay, the Euler-Lagrange equation tells us that zero is equal to, first term here, minus dx cubed of phi, this term minus all the other terms. So we got minus one half phi dot from this term. This term gives us minus one half phi dot minus six phi dx phi. These two combine. We can multiply everything by minus one to obtain our final expression. Zero is equal to phi dot plus dx cubed of phi plus six phi dx phi, which is just the KDV equation. Excellent, we have derived it from this Lagrangian. We know where the factor of six comes from, just two factors of one half in Lagrangian. Pretty cool. If you enjoyed this, want to see more, please subscribe. See you next time.